Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and, uh, and checking out the series. I do hope you hit that subscribe button while you're hanging around. I do three new interviews every single week, new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, sometimes more. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover the new ones at all the usual places in podcast land, including iTunes and Apple Podcasts, at Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFBK.org, or of course, right here on YouTube. I'm Kyle Mayer. Today, I've got a pair of guests. Bowen Yang and Teresa Shao. We're going to be talking Aquafina is Nora from Queens. It's uh, season three, just beginning on Comedy Central. Uh, Teresa actually is a co-creator of the show, and I'm going to be asking her, you know, what's the story they wanted to tell with this season? You know, when we left off uh, at season two, it's actually been a couple of years and the pandemic had just hit. So now we're coming out of the pandemic and uh, and our family, um, they're not in a good place for the most part. None of them are. So we're going to be talking about that. And on Bowen's side, he might be the only character who's actually got uh, a leg up. Uh, you know, when we last left off Bowen as uh, as cousin uh, Edmund uh, was uh, was becoming an actor. And now he's found fame just in time to have an identity crisis. So we're going to hear a little about, bit about how that mirrors his own life for the first time with this character. Uh, unlike the first two seasons, he, he didn't have a lot to relate to with the character in those. But uh, we'll hear about that. Since he's on Saturday Night Live, I want to ask, well, especially since he plays so many characters on SNL, I want to ask if there's ever any overlap, especially when he's taking on new roles. So we'll hear about that. We're going to hear about some of the guest stars, including uh, Michael Bolton, who has a cameo in a, uh, a two or three episodes in this season, and uh, and Weed, too. Weed, uh, now legal in the real world in New York, that means it's also legal in this fictionalized version in Queens. And uh, it has its own uh, story uh, where uh, somebody becomes a kingpin and everything just gets weird and wacky like always. So let's jump into it. We're talking season three of Aquafina is Nora from Queens. It's Kyle Meredith with Bowen Yang and Teresa Shao. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Pleasure to meet you both. Uh, let me tell you how much fun I've had watching the whole series, but especially this season. Everything, we got to get a little bit weirder, a little bit more out there. It's been so much fun. So I'll just throw the congrats at you both right off the beginning. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Yeah. Uh, Teresa, I'll start with you. When we begin here, the family is not in a great place. <laughs> uh, most people aren't in a great place on this one. What is the story you wanted to tell getting into season three? Yeah, you know, I, I think after all that you know the whole country has been through it's like it feels like we start at a really real place with the family of like they're still trying to figure things out things have not gone at least for everyone else except for edmund things really haven't gone the way that they expected it to and you know it really was like grounding everyone in real life of just like where is everyone going and kind of like what are we what, what what's the plan for you know the our lives and i think everyone still doesn't really know and i think that's that's okay yeah i think there was that sense that uh out of the out of the pandemic out of the lockdown that we were all going to come out better people and uh i think this is kind of the reflection that shows us that that didn't really happen <laughs> yeah exactly um uh, bowen uh, as, as Teresa mentioned here uh edmund does however get to live a bit of his dream um with acting success, although immediately has an identity crisis <laughs> on top right. of that. How did you want to play Edmund this round? Because uh, there is some character development. There is some cluelessness still, but, but it, it's further than that. Right. Definitely. And I would even, I would even argue that he starts out the season and probably not like on a similar level to everyone else where he, you know, might outwardly appear to be successful and happy and fulfilled, but there are these pretty gaping holes in his in his sort of sense of self and his sense of fulfillment and his sense of happiness, like all those things that I said might outwardly seem to be true. But um, I, I truly think that this was a season that I got to really ground the Edmund performance in something that I could really easily access, uh, access in my own life where, um, you know, I've never, you know, in prior seasons, I've never had to, I've never undergone like a college admission scandal. I've never, you know, been humiliated at my work in, in that aspect. Um, I'd certainly auditioned and had bad auditions, but in this season, I got to really in a very concurrent way, be like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a working actor right now, but I'm also like, I do have these identity questions. I do have these sort of concerns about, am I filling a hole in my life with gratuitous, you know, meetings with people that like, I, I would never see again. Like, you know, that was a very relatable thing. And so, um, 
it was a very, very personal way of going into Edmund this season that I found very refreshing and different. Yeah. Do you find that that, that helps you solve any of those problems, get, getting to act it out I in this honest, way? Yeah, I honestly think so, because I feel like since we wrapped, like I've really kind of been more like, let me just let me just work on myself. Let me just not, I probably won't find anything to, not that I've been like, you know, putting myself out there too much, but I'm just like, I don't think I, I think like the way Edmund works it out is pretty, it's a pretty good model for myself where I'm like, maybe I get to just like chill and be a real person for a little bit and just focus on one thing. Yeah. And you still kept it funny the whole time. I mean, I think that's oh, thank you. the great feat of all this. Yeah, and, and maybe this isn't the right, you know, um, not on the personal side, I guess is what I'm saying. But, you know, when you've got characters, when when you play so many characters and, you know, talking about SNL to to everything that you do, do you find that you want to keep them separated? I mean, is there ever so much happening that you start seeing the overlap? Oh, I mean, sure. I, I'm probably still like a dilettante when it comes to acting, when it comes to like these roles that I have to stay with for a long time where yes, SNL, I get to just sort of dip in and out. I'd never have to think about motivation or character arcs or anything, but with, um, with Nora and with other stuff I've done, I'm like, Oh, I really have to like kind of find an entry point into these people. And, um, you know, I feel like you do have to live on some level. Your body doesn't really know the difference between what's fiction and what's not. And so I kind of, you do learn to sort of modulate that a little bit, um, and separate those things. Yeah. Uh, we got some great guest stars on this season as well. Uh, Teresa, uh, well, I'm just picking out a couple here. Michael Bolton, especially having him. Yes. <laughs> Is it one of these things like you have the wish list or do you have the scene later? And then when you have somebody on like that, I mean, I know we don't get to hear him sing in the in the show, but are there at least some musical moments off camera? Oh, well, he, he actually does sing in the show, um, but it was funny because in, um, in, in the script, essentially, we had thought it would be really fun to have, you know, a character that's working at this music store be a big time superstar. And we had written, you know, think Michael Bolton, basically in, in parenthetical as to this character named Kevin, who is just kind of like this unassuming employee <laughs> at the store. And we just, we never really expected that Michael Bolton would say yes to this, but actually went out there and he said yes. And to his credit, he was so lovely. He was incredible. He came in, he, you know, just did a great job in his scenes. Uh, he came back for uh, for one of the the last episodes as well, and um, and then he does he does actually sing in the show. So it's really that was a, quite a treat to be able to see that. Yeah, and and as far as the musicians go, I mean, you go to Iceland. There are Bjork references. Did was <laughs> is this the, if you build it, they will come to? You? I mean, did you reach out at least? Was that part of it? To Bjork? <laughs> yes. We oh didn't reach out to Bjork, I don't think. That would have yeah. been amazing. That would have, that been, would have she, been amazing. She's a wonderful actor. She would have been great. She would have been great. I feel like that's a missed I would have, I'm a missed huge opportunity. Fan. Yeah, for right. Sure. I'm a huge Bjork fan. One of the other characters, Weed, becomes a part of this season as well as it's legal <laughs> in New York. And there's so much of I don't know what's real and what's not ever in in this show. For you all both uh, to play around with that, I mean, what what does that mean to your job? Because these fantasy sequence, reality, not reality. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like, I, I mean, I'll I'll let Teresa speak to this, but I, I I think it is the perfect it is the perfect stoner comedy as is as as a light stoner myself. Yeah, I think it's a blend of you know you have these real moments obviously that are really grounded. And I think just to be able to play in those more insane, fantastical elements. But I mean, I think especially now, all of us knowing Lori Tanchin and like the absolute badass that she is, it's like, oh, yeah, of course, that grandma would start a weed empire. Like, I, I can see that absolutely. So um, just being able to like have the license to play with that um, in this world has always been so fun. Well, I absolutely love what you all do, and I'm so grateful for this show. And how it ends up is so mind-blowingly fun. I cannot wait to see if uh, if you find ways to go further down this rabbit hole as well. Uh, thank you both for what you're doing, and uh, thank you both for taking the time to talk about it. Thanks, thank Kyle. You. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Bye. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.